All right, let's take a look at a two-dimensional kinematics physics puzzle. Kinematics is a word that means constant acceleration. So, and two-dimensional means that we are looking at acceleration happening in two dimensions at the same time. Uh, and in this case, and in most cases in physics puzzles, you're going to be looking at motion happening in the X dimension and the Y dimension. And the X dimension is horizontal. Ooh, I'm using a big, <laughs> I'm using a big pencil stroker. Let's go with a something more reasonable. All right, and the <laughs> get rid of this business. Not just selling us. All right. The X dimension is horizontal. The Y dimension is vertical. Taken from your standard mathematical graph coordinate plane. Hooray. So um, we have Luke Skywalker and his droid R2-D2 crash land on the swamp-covered planet Dagobah while searching for the Jedi Master Yoda. While swimming towards the shore, R2-D2 is swallowed and then spit out by a swamp monster as Luke watches helplessly from shore. When R2-D2 is spit out of the water, he leaves the surface, traveling at 2 2.5 meters per second. That's 22.5 meters per second at a 35 degree angle to the horizontal. You may assume that Dagobah has the same gravitational pull as Earth. Okay, so we've highlighted all the information we need to get started. We also have a nice picture here that is giving us that same information right here in a visu visual form. Okay, good stuff. The first thing to, uh, to acknowledge is that the same gravitational pull as Earth is going to be 9.81, 9.81 meters per second uh, every second you're in free fall. And you can be in free fall as you're moving upwards. And if you're in free fall as you're moving upwards, then you are experiencing 9.81 meters per second of uh, velocity change downwards every second, which means you're gonna be slowing down. Your acceleration is pointed in the opposite direction from your velocity, and so they're working against each other and their speed is going to be slowing down. Once you stop at the top of your flight, once that 9.81 meters per second change every second happens to get you down to a velocity of zero, then your direction of velocity will change and your velocity is going to be pointed down. You're going to start to speed up as your acceleration is going to be working with your velocity. Now, in order to start mathematically describing this stuff, we're going to need to establish pluses and minuses, a positive direction and a minus direction for both of our dimensions. And so for the y dimension, we'll say up is positive, and I'll draw that on my little coordinate system here on the right, and then down will be negative, and that will make this acceleration of gravity a negative value because it is pointed down. And then we'll make to the, you know what, you know what, since we have R2 drawn as being fired to the left, Let's just make to the left our positive horizontal direction, and then to the right will be our negative horizontal direction. So that is that. All right, now we've established directions. We've drawn that on our diagram to communicate to that, that to anyone who follows behind us. And I'm gonna do one other thing, okay? I'm gonna call this negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm gonna call that letter G, the lowercase letter G. And then I'm actually gonna go one step further. I'm gonna be very, very audacious. And I'm gonna round that negative 9.81 to a negative 10, a nice, crisp, clean negative 10 meters per second squared. And uh, I'm doing that to make my math a little bit simpler. And uh, also because it's really, it's not going to make a big difference in how I solve the puzzle. It'll make a small difference in my final answer, but really it's not a huge deal. And you'll see this kind of approximation happen. It's a totally um, allowable and acceptable and common even in um, advanced placement physics work. So we're going to do that. Now let's start attacking the questions, the puzzles. Let's problem solve here. So how far horizontally does R2 travel before hitting the ground? And the ground is level, and that's kind of key, with the surface of the water. And that's kind of, uh, you know, true to most swamps, I guess, where um, the whole swampland is pretty much a level ground. 
Now, there's a really cool thing that happens here when you're working over level ground with a projectile. Um, you have a special equation called the range equation. And I'm going to scroll up now and I'm going to start doing some work here. And the range equation was developed, I believe it was developed for originally for military purposes. You're firing cannons over a um, relatively level battlefield. And you want to know where your projectile is going to land. And you know the approximate, like, launch velocity for uh, an average cannonball out of your out of your cannon um i would call that like maybe the muzzle velocity right and you know that and you know the angle that you're going to put your cannon at and then you know that you're on the planet earth or in this case dagobah then you can use the range equation to figure out how far your cannonball will go well r2d2 is essentially a cannonball being fired out of a monster's mouth which is the cannon at a 35 degree angle from the ground and uh at 22.5 meters per second for their for his initial velocity the range equation looks like this it's actually some fancy algebra that combines two kinematics equations together to create this but once you memorize this you don't need to uh, work out those that combination ever again you can just start with this equation right now so for range i'm actually going to use some i have to establish my shorthand with you here's my symbols that i'm going to use and i'm going to use um for the range, let's say this is over here, this is where R2D2 is going to land. Okay, so this is going to be our final horizontal position. All right, so I'm going to call that X subscript F for final and X for horizontal position. And then back here where R2D2 is being shot, we're going to call this X subscript not or subscript zero because that is his initial horizontal position or we would say at time zero and so um, that that's why we're going to use the not there now the change in our 2d disposition is his horizontal displacement dis meaning change placement meaning where you are so displacement literally means change in your placement and here is a displacement vector for him and it's to symbolize change we use a triangle. So I'm going to put that triangle or delta is the Greek letter delta. It's actually where our English letter capital D comes from. You can kind of see the evolution of a delta into a D, right? Over time. So uh, delta and that means change in your spot. X marks the spot, right? All you pirates out there are going to know that one for sure. <laughs> R. Okay, now we're going to use that is our range, all right? That's the range, the range of our projectile. And so we're going to put that in the front of our equation because this whole thing is going to give us that range. And that is actually what we're being asked, how far horizontally does R2-D2 travel, which is going to be the range. Now, the range equation says that for a projectile fired at an angle over level ground, it's got to be level. You can't use the range equation if you're not over level ground. And it says that what matters? What matters uh, for how far your projectile is going to go? Well, it matters how fast you shot the projectile. So that's going to go right in the front here. And I'm going to use a lowercase v to symbolize velocity. Now, how do we show a lowercase v instead of an uppercase v, which in physics, an uppercase v can symbolize voltage. So how do I separate those two when really I'm writing them at the same size? On paper here, an uppercase V is going to just be your strong, sharp V like this and this and this. A lowercase V is going to have a little, I call it a Nike swoop, but, but it's really kind of just like a, a little soft edge to it there on the left. And that's how I'm going to draw my lowercase V's to for velocity. So there is our velocity. And how, how do we say initial or at time zero? We're going to put a little subscript to label this at time zero. So a naught or a zero. And it really matters how fast you fire it, so we're going to make this squared in the equation. All right, so your range is dependent on your initial velocity squared. Now, it's also dependent on the angle that you fire your projectile. So we're going to multiply this by the sine, and there's some fun trig as to why sine is coming in here, trig being short for trigonometry. But uh, again, you'd have to work out all that. And I don't want to take the time. This is already going to be a long enough video as it is. So sine is going to sine of two times the angle that we fire our projectile. And I'm going to use this, this Greek letter theta. Theta. Theta is a Greek letter. 
and it looks like a, a zero with a horizontal line through it. And that's where, that's going to mean angle. All right, so that's going to be our angle measurement. In degrees, you've got to do this in degrees. So if you're using a calculator, then make sure you make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And so sine of two times the angle that we launch at. And then that's all that matters except for, wait a minute, why is this projectile going to come back down? Why would it ever come back down? Well, gravity is going to have to burn away at its upward momentum, its upward velocity, and then give it a downward velocity to bring it back down. So the strength of gravity is going to really matter as well. And the stronger the gravity, the shorter the range, right? It's not going to go farther on a planet with a gravity that's going to pull it down quicker, right? So right now what we're saying is that that uh, the range is directly related by saying that it's equal to, we're saying it's pretty much directly related to the initial velocity. So if the initial velocity is faster, then, then, this, then, if, then this whole side will get, then this whole side, then this whole side will get bigger, right? If we get initial velocities bigger, and that'll make this whole side bigger, and that means you'll go farther, right? You'll get, a, you'll go farther. Uh, so they're directly related, all right? Now, uh, the angle, okay, the angle here, the angle matters. If you fire this thing like at a zero degree angle, it's not going to go for you far. It's just going to thud right into the ground, right? You're firing it like horizontally at a zero degree angle. And here's the ground. It's just going to go, like, hey, that's not a very big, that's not a very big change in X. But at some point, at some point, if you angle it straight up, it's just going to go up and come back down. And it's just going to like right there. It is not going to, it's not going to have a very big change in X either. It's going to pretty much be a zero meter change change in x. So, so there's got to be a magical point here. And at sine of two theta, uh, that would be sine. Uh, so let's the magical point, by the way, is right in the middle of these two. So right in the middle of zero and 90 is 45 degree angle. That's that right there. And sine of sine of two times 45, two times 45, sine of two times 45 is 90 degrees. 2 times 45 is 90. Sine of 90 is 1, okay? And so that's the biggest value you can get because when you take sine of a, an angle in degrees, you can only get numbers between 0 and 1, okay? So between 0 and 1. And so that's the biggest value. And so 45 degree angle is going to be the farthest, the best or, or optimal angle for firing any projectile to get the farthest range. All right, so that's what we've just said mathematically here. And then the last thing we want to say is that uh, if we, we're going we're gonna to divide our number now by the strength of the gravity on the planet. That, if that, now, if that number, if that gravity is getting bigger and bigger, uh, then, then we're dividing this whole side, we're dividing that whole side by a bigger, bigger number. Like imagine the top, let's make numbers easy, okay? So just imagine over here, imagine the top number to be, let's just say you multiply everything together and you get, the, you get a number of 10, okay? A number of 10. And then we're going to divide it by the strength of gravity on Dagobah and Earth, which is 10. So you're going to get a range of one. It'll go one meter, about three feet forward and thud, one, one yard almost, right? And a little more than one, one, one yard, but all right. So, and then, but if you have the same initial velocity, the same angle, so everything multiplied together on the top comes out to 10, but then the gravity is stronger, like on a planet with twice the gra gravitational pull as Earth or Dagobah, then, then you're only going to go half the distance, right? You're going to, your, your projectile is going to get drawn down quicker and hit the ground faster or sooner, which means that it has less time in the air, has less time to move forward and has less range or literally half the range for twice the gravitational pull. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. And then hopefully now you know why we have what we have in the range equation. And I'm a very big proponent of, I'm not going to just show you something without explaining why it's cool or why, uh, why it looks the way it looks, because really, it's much more, it's, you're much more educated to understand w this equation and why it looks the way it does than just to be able to memorize it and, and just chunk it out, okay? So let's go ahead, and my Apple <laughs> Pencil is getting low, so let's go ahead and like finish this bad boy out, and then we'll do the next problem okay, in another video. So let's figure out what we're going to plug in here. So what is our initial velocity? Well, we're going to pull this right from our, our uh, 
information up here with 22.5 meters per second. So I'm going to put this in parentheses, 22.5 meters per second. Whenever I, this is called substituting for your given information, all right? So we're substituting for these variables. So I have a variable of V sub naught, V sub zero. And now I'm substituting for it. And whenever I substitute, I put that number in parentheses. Um, it's just a thing I like to do. It helps me feel organized. And then I'm going to put my parentheses, sign of, and then we have an angle of 35 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do a little math here. 2 times 35 degrees, because we do have 2 times theta over there, right? 2 times theta. So 2 times 35 degrees is 70 degrees. All right, so we're going to do sine of 70 degrees. And then we're going to divide by the strength of gravity on Dagobah, and Earth, which is 10 meters per second squared. All right, so once you put all that into your calculator, you're gonna do, you're gonna type in 22.5 squared. Okay, 22.5 squared. And you're gonna 20, whoops, I'm racing now. Good job, Hutch, way to, way to go. Let's go ahead and put that divider back. Yay, okay, 22.5 squared and then and you got that taken care of, okay? And then you're going to multiply it. You're gonna do sine of 70, sine of 70, and then you're gonna multiply those two, okay? 20, whatever you get, 22.5 squared times sine of 70, and then you're going to divide the whole thing by your 10 meters per second squared, okay? Make sure that you are being careful about the way you put it in your calculator so that you do get what you want. You don't wanna do all this work and then not be able to put it into the machine so that the machine can tell you the answer. Um, okay, so now what is our range for R2D2? The answer should come out if you put it all in your calculator correctly. I pause this video now and make sure that you could put this in your calculator. That's a huge thing. Make sure your calculator comes out with what I'm about to write down uh, because if it doesn't, you might have put something in correctly uh, in the wrong order. You might have um, not been in degree mode. If your calculator is in radian mode, then you're going to get something different for sine of 70 degrees than you should. So, but here is the answer if you put it all in correctly. It, all, all into your calculator correctly, not if you put it incorrectly, as in wrong, <laughs> uh, 47.6 meters. All right, now I like to put a box around my answers to be like, yay, everybody, look, look, look. Okay, I like to do that um, to really let those answers shine and uh, help somebody follow my work if they need to, to see that's the end right there. All right, thank you so much for learning about the range equation with me. Hopefully that was helpful. And I really recommend if you're in a situation where you have a high stakes test coming up and you need to be able to do kinematics quickly in a timed situation, memorize, memorize, memorize the range equation but please make sure you memorize that you can only use it for two-dimensional projectiles fired over level ground. If you're looking at a cliff, this is not going to work. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll look at part B to see how much time is R2-D2 going to be in the air while he travels forward those 47.6 meters in our next video. And we'll see you there. Bye-bye.